Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Tuesday, March 22nd, and today we are swinging in the opposite direction of where we were yesterday. Yesterday, we were talking about the damage and the dangers of that spirit of religion. Today, we're talking about the power of being in the spirit. So let's pray. God, I thank you for the fact that we continue to understand you better as we grow in our relationship with you. Lord, as we learn to get into that mode of being in the spirit, letting go, letting the spirit direct that time in that prayer closet, letting the tongues happen, letting all of those things just be directed and completely um, guided by you. Lord, we that's where we encounter prophecy. That's where we encounter visions. That we're, that's where we encounter the power that comes from you and can flow through us. Lord, help us to really be drawn to that time where we let go and we let you be God. God, let us put ourselves to our side, to the side. Let us understand that that old self is dead. We are now this new self and this new self can operate under the divine direction of the Holy Spirit and have the power of God flowing through us as we go through our days. We love you and all we want to do is glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're starting today in Revelation chapter 8, we're starting in verse 9, and we have looked at these verses a few times over the last few weeks. Um, I know we looked at it last week, we looked at it again on Sunday, here we are again on Tuesday, but this passage is so important, and this is what it says. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. So that spirit of religion is that realm of the flesh where you're allowing yourself to be in control. You're not letting anything out of the ordinary happen. But when you are operating in that realm of the spirit, that spirit of God is living inside of you. And now you are operating in this realm where the things that defy the laws of physics are happening. You're having the visions, you're having the prophecy you're hearing the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Miracles are happening through you. You're being told in the grocery store to go pray for a stranger. The unusual is becoming the regular way you operate. And it never gets old. It never gets boring. It never gets stale. I mean, I, God gives me goosebumps on goosebumps every time he shows up and he shows off. So, when you're in that realm of the spirit, the things that are normally, that would normally happen, change. And now you're in this new normal where there's no limit to what can happen. There's no limit to the potential. And you know that every time you set foot in that prayer closet, you're gonna have an encounter with God. You know that every time you leave your house, you could be directed to do something that's completely out of your comfort zone and it's going to be a moment where God is glorified through you in a magnificent way. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. It's important that you put your faith and trust in Christ. You've accepted what he's done on the cross. You've thanked him for the fact that he paid the price for your sin. And you've said, I want you to be the Lord of my life. Verse 10, but if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives light life because of righteousness. You have the righteousness of Jesus Christ and that's what God sees when he looks at you. He doesn't see your mess. You're aware of your mess and that can hold you back. Know that you're walking in that righteousness and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Stop and think about that. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is inside of you. Of course, you're not going to be operating within the normal realm of what the laws of physics dictate happen. Of course, you're going to have these supernatural experiences. Be excited about it. Let God be God and let him flow through you. 
And yes, the extraordinary is going to happen through you. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, this is what it says. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patience, endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Now, he has been sentenced to live on this island because he was telling people about Jesus. That's why he's there. Now, watch what happens to John. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. What does that mean? He was having that prayer closet moment. He was off by himself. He was in the spirit. He was letting the Holy Spirit lead. He was letting the supernatural be in charge. He was in the spirit. And I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Verse 12, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, but when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. Here comes the vision. The supernatural is happening through John. How did it happen? It happened because he was in the spirit. He was letting the supernatural flow through him. He was not saying, oh, this is making me uncomfortable, so, and I'm not in control anymore, so I'm going to shut it down. No, he was letting it flow. And that entire book of Revelation happened because he let it flow. Does he have the choice to squash it? Absolutely he does. And there are many people that will squash it because they're uncomfortable with it. You're going to have goosebumps. Every time I have a big vision, I have goosebumps. My heart is beating fast. I am in awe of what God has done. But it's a beautiful place to be. Let that happen. As we move down to Revelation 4, chapter 1, again, this is still John writing this book. After this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take, what must take place after this. So he's seeing this door. He's hearing this voice. Verse 2. At once, I was in the Spirit. And in there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. Those visions, those dreams, those prophecy, the healing that happens through you. When God tells you to go pray for somebody and it makes you uncomfortable, but you go do it anyway. That's when the supernatural heal happens. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Let him flow through you. And that supernatural will become a regular part of your life but you'll always, always be in awe of it. As you go into your prayer closet today, let, that, let yourself get to the point where you are praying in the spirit. It may sound like moans, it may sound like groans, it may sound like clicks, it may sound like a song. Just let the Holy Spirit lead that prayer time and you'll be blown away at what he shows you. God bless and keep walking the walk.